Hello friends, foes, and other watchers on the internet. My name is Matt, and you're watching Hogwash Gaming. And today, I'm going to bring you the top 10 things you need for a Nerf War. The first thing that you need is a great location. And I suggest somewhere inside, so then even if it rains, you don't have to call the whole thing off, and ammo doesn't get lost as easy. Unless you have some place like an outdoor basketball court, or a baseball field, or something like that. Something rather flat, not a lot of shrubbery or things to lose your ammo in. Though grass can do a good job of hiding things, so maybe the basketball court was a better idea. And don't forget, you also have to have permission to use this place for your Nerf War. Number two is players. You have to have people who are willing to come and shoot at each other with Nerf darts and follow the rules. I know this is really subjective, but people who follow the rules and are responsible are usually better players because they can understand the fact that rules make the game more fun opposed to total chaos. Number three. You have to have nerf weapons, that's kind of obvious, it is a nerf war. Now the ones I suggest are ones that shoot discs, ones that have the revolver kind of build to them, because these don't get jammed as easily, and the ones that shoot a single dart and fit in your hand and they load from the front. Now the reason I suggest those is because they don't jam very easily, and if they do, they're easily fixed. The disc thing even has an anti-jam lever that makes the disc fall right out of the chamber, even if it's not jammed, which is a very nice feature. The guns with clips, the guns with um, magazines that you can't get into, those can jam like crazy. And not only is that bad in the heat of battle, but you also have to take a long time to get the mutilated ammo out and it ruins ammo. So that's something that you might want to look at when you're buying your Nerf guns. You don't want to get the ones, definitely do not, do not, do not get the Nerf tag guns. They are horrible, they are not reliable at all, they destroy ammo, just don't. If they have any kind of inside mechanism, I would suggest stay away from that kind of gun. The automatic guns, the ones that are battery powered, are okay. The problem with those is, when you're going around your location, you're going to be giving yourself away because those motors have a whine to them, and they're very noticeable. So if you're trying to sneak around, probably you don't want the ones that have automatic firing. And as for melee weapons, those are fine too. The long swords, the battle axes, those are great. Especially if you're getting into close quarters, winding corridors, mazes. Yeah, those are great. Number four is caution tape. And this is fantastic for just blocking off areas that you don't want anyone to go to. Um, I have red, but you can get yellow or green. It doesn't matter as long as it can be seen and is recognizable as this is a place that you cannot go. I use this all the time for blocking off locations and making sure that places that are breakable like stained glass windows or places that are dangerous like furnace rooms are just off limits. You don't have to have people going by those places. Number five, refreshments or food. Now this is important because Nerf wars take a long time, and once you get hungry, you're going to stop having fun. So I would suggest having like a few freezer pizzas that you can throw in the oven, so then while you're having a battle, your pizza will be done. I suggest you have someone with next to the oven paying attention to what's going on, because if you don't have someone watching that, then your pizza will burn and everyone will have no food. Number six leaders. Now, this can be tough. You need to get the most responsible and aware people possible for these leaders. They don't have to be team captains, but they have to be people who are kind of in charge of the Nerf War. They need to be the ones that are responsible if something is broken. They need to be the ones responsible if someone gets hurt. They need to be the ones responsible to just keep an eye out and make sure people are following the rules. 
make sure that no one's crossing the caution tape. Just basically people to make sure that your Nerf War is going well. Making sure that everyone's having fun, everyone's staying safe, everyone's following the rules. Not being jerks about it, but just being able to make sure this Nerf War goes on without people getting upset about stuff. Number seven, ammo. Now I probably should have had this further up in the list, but the thing is, if you have Nerf guns, I would assume you'd have ammo. Also, Nerf ammo gets lost all the time. All the time. It's a fact of life. If someone comes into a Nerf war and thinks, I'm going to come out of here with all the Nerf ammo I brought today, they're just kidding themselves, unless they have homing beacons for all of them. There are places all over that your ammo will get lost, and your ammo probably will get stepped on, your ammo will get damaged. Just have extra ammo on hand so then everyone can keep going and they can leave with the majority of their ammo. Just make sure everyone understands that once the ammo leaves their gun, there's no guarantee that it's coming back to them. Number eight is cardboard boxes. Now, I'm talking like refrigerator boxes. Just stuff you can stack, stuff you can cut holes in. We're looking at barricades, especially for if you're using like a gym or an open field or something like that. You need to have some sort of barricades because shooting in open territory is extremely boring. Whereas if you have barricades, you can build up walls. Some of my friends have even pushed up ceiling tiles and looped wire around the metal parts and then held up sheets of cardboard that way to split up an open room. It really works. You can make mazes. It's really fun to have a lot of barricades in open rooms. Small hallways, they don't need the cardboard. If you've got a place with windy corridors like a school or a church, then that's okay. But in the open rooms like the sanctuary, fellowship halls, gyms, you might want to have these cardboard boxes and these cardboard boxes can be picked up in dumpsters all over behind malls. Just make sure you're going into the cardboard recyclable dumpsters and not the garbage because you really don't want to be digging in a garbage dumpster. Number nine, you want to have a scoreboard and probably a scorekeeper. And this can be a chalkboard, it can be a dry erase board, it could even be a pen and paper. You just need to have a way to keep the score because if no one's keeping score, then games can have no point and people will get bored very quickly. Scoreboards are a great way to just make sure that one game has an end and one game has a beginning. There are games that don't need this dynamic, but it's a good thing to have just in case. And last but not least, number 10, you need to watch the rest of the videos that are coming out this month because they're going to be all about Nerf Wars. They're going to give basic rules, they're going to be giving game variants, really want to watch. So until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out.